Good morning and praise the Lord, Victory Cathedral. I miss you, but I'm so glad you are. You have been so faithful. I can't say it enough. You have been a faithful group of people. I am so proud to call myself your pastor or for you to call me pastor. God has assigned me with the awesome responsibility of overseeing you. And he's given us family members, Pookie, Titi, Nene, Cousins, Nim, all over the world. People who are joining us, people who are coming to experience our worship service. I'm so grateful that you are here. It's already better because you came. Thank you. Thank you. You didn't hear me. Thank you for being here today. It's going to be an incredible time. I'm excited that God continues to show us favor, grace, and mercy. It's been a tough season for a lot of our family members, a tough season, but we know that you are tough people, and more importantly, we've got an awesome, powerful God. He is a keeper. So my prayer is that you came ready to praise and to work out. Get it ready. Come on, here we go. We are about to have a good time. Can you sing, talk, and exercise at the same time? <laughs> That's all those years of singing on stage. Thank God that I can still do something. So whatever you can do, make sure you have checked with your doctor. But whatever you're able to do, Jump in, join in, praise, worship, exercise. This is praise and workout. I hope you've got your workout gear on. I tried to tell you in advance, be ready because I want us, I want us to have a good time in God, celebrate our Savior, but we're also going to work on our tempo. All right? We're going to have a great time today. I mean, I'm super excited about it, and I hope you're ready. I'll be back right after praise and workout. How's it going, Victory? We're going to get a good workout out in today. Uh, we're going to praise the Lord while we're doing it. Like it says in the word, uh, Psalms 150, uh, 6, it says, let everything, everybody, get up and praise the Lord, right? So everything that has breath, get praise to the Lord. Let's do it today, all right? Let's be excited to have energy. Let's work it today, y'all. All right. All right. So everything Jamel do, you do. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. When he move, you move. Just like that. <laughs> Let's go!
yeah, 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 yeah. I will say, yeah, 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 yeah. Make some noise. Be the church. Thanks to you, we've been able to be the church through our GYA Give Yourself Away outreach. This week, we've partnered with DuPage Township and Interfaith Food Pantry to serve over 200 seniors and supply them with food. We were also able to provide much needed soap, toothbrushes, and other toiletries to the South Loop. You know, as the outreach passes, this is what we do. Because of the impact the virus has had on isolated seniors, we are sending over 300 letters to several assisted living facilities to let them know we are thinking of you. We just want to say thank you so much to everyone who supported because without you, we couldn't do it. Be the church and thank you. Your giving makes a difference, and Victory has made giving simple. Text Get the Victory, Get the Victory BC, or Get the Victory VC to 77977. Select the giving link. Enter the amount and gift type. If it's your first time giving, you can enter your payment details. Then simply confirm your gift. And just like that, you've made an impact. You can also cash app Get the Victory by downloading the app in the Apple or Google Play Store. Thank you for your generosity. So I hope you enjoyed praise and work out. Yeah! I saw you. I felt in the spirit that you were getting it in, even if you were sitting on your couch just moving your hand. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of praise and work out. Listen, I know that it's back and forth and it's up and down and it's we're going back in. We're not going back in. They're going to open up. We're not opening up. Be safe, family. Trust me. Use the spirit of wisdom. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So be safe. Make sure that you are taking all the precautions. If you just have to go out, do the best that you can. Be as wise as you can in the process. Because we're praying for you. We love you and we want to see you back. We want to see you back. And whatever God decides, he's sovereign. And whenever God decides that we will assemble again, because we will assemble again, everything is just a season. We're going to come together and have the best time ever. I cannot wait to see your faces. I miss you guys so much. I cannot wait to see your faces in this place of worship and the Global Campus family, I love you because you've been faithful. I got some new family members who are connecting with us. If you want to connect, be a victory walker, be a part of the move of God here, then text us. Text the word CONNECT to 38470. You got it? CONNECT 38470. I cannot wait for us to sow into you. First time guests, we got a gift for you. But everybody else that just wants to be a part of the tribe, a part of the army, a part of the movement, and what God is doing through victory, please become a victory walker and connect with us. Get ready for the word. I cannot wait to share what God has given me. It's going to challenge you. It's going to check you. And prayerfully, it's going to change you. Get ready for the restart. Okay, family, it's time for the Word of God. You ready? I'm excited. You pumped up? Come on, you feeling physically fit? I got on my tennis shoes, my workout gear. Come out of this jacket and preach and dance and shout and run. Yeah, <laughs> it's time for a restart. Get off the couch. Stop eating. Put it down. Put, put it down. Put it down now. Yeah, I was beating on the mic because I'm trying to get your attention. Put it down now because it's time for us to restart. And part of the restart process is for us to become physically ready to handle what God wants us to hold. We have a wealth of opportunity and blessings waiting on us on the other side of this season. Trust and know this is just a season. How do you know, Pastor? Because Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says, For everything, there is a time, there is a season for every activity under the heavens. It's not going to last. So you will come out of quarantine. I know it doesn't feel like it, but you will. And when you come out, 
I want you to be able to walk out. <laughs> yes, I want you to be able to walk out, to run out. I don't want you to have to roll out. Okay, so we're going to get it together. Tell yourself, say, self, I'm going to get it together because I'm getting ready to restart. We're going to restart our destiny, our purpose, our journey. God's going to do a new thing in this new season. It's time. It's time. It's time to restart. And so, uh, all of my brothers, I think you're ready for the push-up challenge. Are you ready? Here we go. I'm going to see if you can do as many push-ups as me. You ready? Nah. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> I'm just restarting too, so we're going to work our way up in this thing. All right, I'm so excited about the Word of God on today. We're going to have fun. It's going to be challenging. It's going to cut. The Bible says the Word of God is like a two-edged sword. That means it cuts going and coming. It divides asunder. It's going to challenge us. It's going to challenge us. It'll check us in my prayers, and it will also change us. You ready? Then go with me. Turn with me to 3 John, the first chapter, the second verse. We're going to start there. I got two passages of Scripture. One of them is more familiar than the other. Um, actually, no, they both might be very familiar to you. 3 John 1 and 2, King James Version, 3 John 1 and 2. It says this. I'm going to read it to you as you read along with me. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Did you get it? Come on, I know we're quarantined sluggish, but I read it with me. Because I want you to know this is what God is saying to you about his desire, his heart, and his love, his passion towards you. This is about you. All right, here we go. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Great word. Now, jump over to Jeremiah 29, 11. Go to Jeremiah 29 11. I know you know this one. It's familiar to you. So if you don't have to go there. You don't have to go there. But Jeremiah 29 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you. New, New International Version. I know the plans I have for you. The Lord says, my, I declare that my plans are to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope and to give you a future. God says, I don't want you to be here in this mundane condition and situation, but I want to prosper you. I don't want you to be caught up in the hopelessness of this world and all that's going on. I want to give you a hope that is beyond this world. And I am going to do it with a bright future. What an incredible promise that he made. What an incredible desire and design to God's word. The architect of everything says, I'm trying to give you a hope, a future, and prosper you. That's incredibly exciting to me, and it causes me to feel good about taking care of the purpose that God has entrusted me with. You ready? You ready? Yes, we're going to pray. We've got to pray. I'm going to ask that God will open up your mind, open up your eyes, your ears, your heart, that he would give you humility, that he would break you or break something in this season and cause you to literally be elevated to a place where God can get the greatest glory out of your life. Let's pray. Pray with me. For Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you for grace and mercy. Thank you for your strength, your power, your might. Thank you for covering us and keeping us to make it today. Thank you that many of us, we had an opportunity to praise and work out today to take care of the, our temple. Thank you that you have blessed us tremendously to even uh, be able to get out of the bed, to move our arms, our hands, that we even woke up with our right minds. God, we thank you. Now help this moment be a moment that is fruitful, powerful, effective, and has great impact. Don't let us leave the same way that we came. But the fact that we stopped here today is because you got something you need us to hear, something that you want to say. So we bind distraction and confusion in our household and all around us. We will not move until you speak God let us hear from heaven change and challenge us and get the glory in Jesus name we pray amen amen hallelujah if you were here I'd say you may be seated in the presence of our God so I know you were standing at home so sit down somewhere and let's just spend some time talking for a few moments 
Uh, this is a new series, or well, it's not a new series. This is a series that I've been in called Restart. It is to, again, go back into a situation, a setting, a circumstance that you possibly have been in before. It is to, again, move forward. It is to, again, re-engage. It is to, again, to start. So I'm so excited that this is going to be a new season. We're going to turn the corner. I know that it appears that this season is never going to end, but there has never been a season since God has instructed and, and began the world. There's never been a season uh, since God has orchestrated uh, and ordained uh, seasons into existence. There's never been a season that has not ended. Did you get that? That's good news for us. There has never been a season that has not ended. That means your worst seasons, your bad seasons, your troubled seasons, your wait seasons, your, your problematic seasons, your painful seasons, your seasons of making and discovery, your seasons of being uh, wandering, your seasons, it's not going to last. And even the pandemic season, guess what? It's not going to last. God is God all by himself, and he is the one who controls all of the seasons. So thanks be to God that as bad as it may feel and seem, the season is not going to last. So I asked the question at the beginning of this series, then what? What's next? After this season, what are you preparing for? How are you preparing for it? What are you doing to hear from God so that your next season can be incredible? I'm so glad that you are beginning the process of discovering the answer to that question and that you're doing the work that is necessary. My prayer is that you don't allow this quarantine to quarantine your purpose. I pray that it doesn't isolate and insulate the passion that you have to live out the purpose of God for your life. I pray that you don't allow yourself to sit so idly all of this time that you have had to reboot and rebuild, I pray that you don't waste time because it is the most precious, rare commodity that you possess. You own nothing more special and precious than your time. So you have to be careful how you spend it. If you spend this time on the couch, not reading and, 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 and intensely studying and learning and growing and expanding your knowledge and even hearing from God or having a relationship with God, you will waste precious, valuable time. And so I pray that this sermon today pushes you off of your couch, pushes you out of your comfort zone, and causes you to start or get ready to restart. When the gates are open and we are allowed back out into our normalcy or some semblance of normalcy or outside, I pray that you take off running because you're in such great physical, spiritual, mental, emotional condition. And trust me, you want to be healthy because that's going to cause you to be able to fight even this germ, this virus that is ransacking households and destroying people's lives, that is, that is separating families. You need to give, give your body everything that it needs in order to be fruitful, powerful, and successful against this enemy. Yeah, we can have all the faith in the world, but faith without works is dead. So you need to work with your body so that your body will work for you. You got it? Say it again. I've got to work with my body so that my body will work for me. Amen. Now, there was a story about a, a father. A uh, little boy asked his dad. He said, listen, dad, I, I, I got to ask you a question. If there were three frogs that was sitting on a limb that hung over a pool. And one of the frogs decided to jump into the pool. How many frogs would be on the limb? So the dad scratches his head and says, this is such a simple question. Okay, um, that's not a big deal. He said, two. He says, no. He repeated himself. If you had three frogs that were sitting on a limb and one of the frogs decided to jump, how many frogs would you have on the limb? He says, oh, I got it. Okay, this is a trick question. So basically, if one of them decides to jump, the other two are going to jump too, so none. He says, no, Dad, you have three because the first frog only decided to jump. In other words, he didn't jump. So the question 
I have for you is have you just decided that you were going to be physically fit? Have you just decided that you're going to take care of the temple that God has given you called your body? Have you just decided or have you leaped and begun the process of being physically ready to handle what God wants you to have? See, uh, the alarming statistics should cause us to be quake, to, to literally shake in our boots and to be quickened in our spirit. Because if you look at the statistical data of health and, and, the, and the health of the world, of, of our nation, but even more importantly, uh, in, in, in my own experience and exposure, the health of the African-American community and the people of color, it should cause everybody to tremble and to be convicted and to put the chicken leg down. Yes, I'm talking to you. It should cause you to rethink things because we are positioned at a rate that when the pandemic came through and started sweeping through the land, it was our communities, the people of color, who were hit the worst. Not just because of our physical health. I know that there's some socioeconomic conditions that, it, that exist. There's some imparity even in, in, in the societal norms and how things are systematically structured. But the one thing that we cannot deny taking fault for is our own physical health. We have to take responsibility for how we function, how we move, and what we allow inside of our temple or inside of our body. And again, I'm not discounting that there are some social and economic conditions. There are food deserts that exist, and we need to fight and do everything that we can to remedy those things, to turn those things around. Yes, we need parity in the healthcare system. We need a process that allows for people to have access to it. But that is no excuse for not doing our part to take care of our temple or to nurse and nourish our own health. Listen at these statistics. It's alarming. The number of adults with diagnosed heart disease in America is 27.6 million, which is 11.5%. The number of deaths from heart disease, get this, this should, this should cause you to stagger, is 611,100,000. 611,105. And it is the number one cause of deaths in America. Percent of adults ages 20 and over with hypertension, 32.5% of the people. And this is, these statistics are a little dated. They're 2011, 2012. They were the best ones I could find at the time. But even that has not changed. It has not gotten better or improved, but it is likely worse. Percentage of blacks or African-American women, 20 years and over with hypertension. Get this, 44%. Percentage of African-American men, 20 years and over with hypertension, 39.9%. Women, pay attention because you, you guys are, are we, of course, the male presence and the male uh, circumstance when it comes to hypertension, heart disease, uh, it's more prevalently known. But don't sleep, women, sisters, you've got to take care of your health as well. Number five cause of death is, is a stroke. The number five cause of death. Percentage of adults 20 years and older with diabetes, 12.3% of our society. Percentage of adults aged 20 years and over who are obese, 35.1%. Percentage of adults aged 20 and over who are overweight, including obesity, is 69% in 2011 and through 13. African American obesity. Men, 37.9%. Women, 57.6%. Family, we have to do better. We have to do better. Now that we see that this virus has swept through our community and we're having to literally fight for our lives, the last thing that we need to do is not be in a condition or a position where our bodies can fight for and with us. We can pray all day. I can go and intercede all day long, but it does not necessarily mean you don't have to deal with the consequences of your choices. Yes, God can. Oh, he will. 
and yes, he can. For all of my super saints, my, my real deep spiritual super saints, that's what I call them. The people who believe that, that, that you, you don't have to do what you have to do for your part because God's just going to supernaturally impart his grace upon it. Now watch this. He can. Please be clear. I'll go, I'll, I'll go African-American tradition all day long and... And the Lord, he can and he will, but you still have to do your part. Yeah, I'm talking to you. you you're still responsible. See, here's the thing. God forgives sins, but God doesn't remove the consequence. You still have to deal with the consequence of odor overeating of slothfulness. You have to deal with the consequences of making bad, unwise choices and decisions. And so you've got to start making better decisions. We have to start. I, I want to make sure that I'm clear. I'm preaching to me more than I'm preaching to y'all because I'm too low to the ground to be this round. God's going to have to do a good and perfect work in all of us. So be very clear. I'm not pointing the finger. I'm talking to all of us so that we can make sure that we are maintaining our stamina and our health so that if a virus or a foreign body tries to attack us, we got prayer, we've got power, and we've got good health. Are you with me? All right. Let's move forward. Listen, uh, we labor to give ourselves all the bells and whistles in life. We labor to make sure that we have the best of everything. But we neglect the most important aspects of our lives, and that's our health. We make sure that our 401k is in place. We make sure that our children have college funds. We make sure that we, are, we have a job. We make, sure that we, have, we make sure about all of these things. But the one thing that we neglect and negate is our own health. And here's the thing. You've been working so hard for so long, for so much, and it would be a shame that you don't live to experience it. All the attacks or trials can bring their share of difficulty. But in my own experience, they all pale in comparison to the issues of dealing with your health. Yeah, this, is, this was prevalent even in the time, this is not a new phenomenon, even in the time of the ministry of Jesus Christ. Most of the dire or desperate cries from people was about healing their bodies. It was about health. There are 45 miracles recorded during the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. And 20 of them were healings. 20 of them. So you've got to know that this is not a new phenomenon. But it is one that God has graced us. God says, I've not given you a spirit of fear. But I've given you a spirit of love and power. And guess what? A sound mind. A sound mind makes sound decisions. Sound decisions are ones that give you life, not cause you death. We have to do a better job at maintaining our health, family. Listen, it's so important because God's got an assignment for your life, a purpose for you. But willful sin, including the sin of gluttony, overeating, slothfulness, Willful sin will cause you to miss out on the moment of opportunity that God has assigned for your life. Please know that it is so important. People need you. Your life is so valuable that somebody's eternity is hinged upon what you're now putting inside your body. Whether or not you will be here doesn't mean they won't get it. Doesn't mean that somebody else won't be used. Doesn't mean that God won't assign somebody else the task that you refuse to take. And to be responsible for it? No, it doesn't mean that. But listen, I don't want to miss any part of my assignment. I want to live out the full breath of everything God has instructed me to do. I hope that's your prayer too. Maintenance. It means that we have to maintain what we actually have. When your body, uh, the body that God has given and graced you to have, it has a maintenance program. There is a maintenance plan. And I can understand why you're not maintaining your health. I get it. Let me tell you how I know. Because uh, you, you don't maintain your car. <laughs> When's the last time you had an oil change? When's the last time you had a tune-up? Why are you riding with your tires? One of them is wobbling because it's, you had not had an alignment in so long. Is that your brakes we hear coming down the street for a mile away? Listen. 
maintain. You don't wait till it runs all the way down, but you have to have a maintenance plan. We value our cars. We value our houses. We'll have warranties on our washing machines, our refrigerators. We have all of these things in place to protect our things. But what maintenance plan, what, what warranty do you have on your body? Again, I, I, this is not a sermon for the super deep. So I know this. Uh, oh, the Holy Ghost is my warranty. I know somebody's going to be like, oh, God is my warranty. Oh, because he can fix it. But here's the thing. So can you. Most of the things that we wrestle with in our health, not all, some of them are genetically disposition, are genetically uh, are, are given to us. And there's nothing that you can't outrun Dana. Dana don't lie, according to my, my wife says it. Dana don't lie. DNA. You can't outrun it, but you can certainly slow it down. Trust me. That's what my cardiologist said many years ago. You can't outrun it. It's in your DNA, but you can certainly slow it down. And so you've got to do everything that you possibly can to make sure that your health is on point. You have to have a maintenance plan. So why, why, pastor, should I even take care of my body? Well, here's a few reasons. Number one, Satan understands that he can't keep you out of heaven because if you receive Jesus Christ as your savior, you are saved. But he can't keep you out of heaven. So what he does is he attempts to make it hard for you while you're on earth. He will do everything that he can to stop you from honoring God and from fulfilling your divine purpose. And one of his main weapons is to attack your health or your body. He wants you to suffer and struggle all the way to heaven. He wants you to get to heaven not being able to really breathe fully or walk upstairs. He wants you to get to all. He wants you to struggle and strain and live in miserable conditions all the way to heaven. We know that that is God's. That's not God's design because He said, "Above all, my desire is that you prosper and be in good health." Even as your soul prospers. Like Job, Satan wanted to afflict him so much so that he would curse God. Same thing. He wants to afflict your body so that you turn against God and say, why are you letting me do this? When you know that you're a diabetic, but I see you walking out with a piece of cake. Cake, cake, cake. I'm going to leave that right there. Let me drop it. I ain't going to push it. Trust and know. You have to do your part. Job, the second chapter, verses four through seven. Skin for skin, Satan replied, a man will give all he has for his own life. But now stretch out your hand and strike his flesh and bones and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well, he's in your hands, but you got to spare his life. So Satan went out from his presence of the Lord and afflicted Job with painful sores from the soles of his feet to the crown of his head. Please understand that Satan wants you to suffer so bad. So don't give him any ammunition, no fuel. It doesn't mean that, that because you are sick or because you're going through something, that you must be rebellious, you must be sinful, or there must be something that you're doing wrong. No, but it does mean that you have an opportunity to be positioned to fight him the best possible way you can. And, and, and the other reason... That you want to take care of your body? This is shocking. I've preached this before. So if you've heard it before, this is your rehearsal. This is your reminder. Because it's a restart. The other reason that you need to take care of your body? Now this is shocking. This is really deep. As a matter of fact, hold on. Let me pray. God, give me the revelation to give this the power, the efficacy, or the, uh, the, 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 the merit and the push that, that it needs to have. This is a big one. I had to pray myself into this one. I got to drop this one. This is a, it's a heavy one right here. It's real heavy. Get ready. It's heavy. It's heavy. I'm telling you, it's heavy. Hold on. The other reason you need to take care of your body is because you only get one. Yeah, you only get one. I have never. I've been here for a lot of years, and I'm going to leave it right there. <laughs> I'm older than I look. But I've been here a long time, and I have never seen a body for sale in Walmart. I don't know Kmart. Kmart going out of business. I don't Target, Target, Macy's, Neiman Sachs, Bergdorf Goodman, whatever your flavor. You can't go buy a new body. Now you can tuck and tweet and, you know, puff out and, you know, do all y'all do and everything that's done. You can do all that you want to with the one you got, but you can't get another one. 
you only get one. It's the best decision of your life to take care of it because you won't get another one. And this one has to last you all of your days and throughout all of your purpose so you can fulfill all of your assignments and God can get all of his glory. The third reason that you need to take care of your body is that health issues are largely attributed to decisions and not always the devil. Yeah, that's a, we give him so much credit. We, oh, that old devil is busy. No, no, that was what you ate. That was how you ate it. And that was when you ate it, the time you ate it. That's not the devil. That, this is hard. I told you it's going to be a challenging sermon, but it's you. No, it's, it's the honey bun, the Twinkie, the ding dong. It's you, the cake, the, the, it's you, the caramel cake, the, the German chocolate cake. This is you, the chicken, the fried, this fried, that every day is you. Some of y'all still using fat bag. God bless you for deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ. It's you. It's not the devil. It's your decisions. You've got to make better choices. Some of the battles we have are not de demonic. They're delicious. Yeah, it's just that simple. It's not demonic. It's just delicious. For food consumed from the wrong places and prepared the wrong way can yield health ramifications that are alter, that alter your, your quality of life, your way of life, and your length of life. Some of you are not fighting the devil. You're fighting chicken. Fried. Fried. Deep fried. That's what you fight. That ain't the devil. You're fighting Popeyes. Help us, Holy Ghost. What you will learn, what we will learn in this time is that God will allow you in this process of restarting to get back on course, to reset. Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your what? Your mind. So what I'm trying to help you with is not your diet. This is not a diet plan. I'm not here to give you a diet plan. I'm here to tell you that what you need is a new mind. You need a new mindset. And so here is a simple plan, a simple few steps that I'm going to offer today from a biblical perspective that should challenge you to the point where you leave this service and you decide, you know what? I've got to do better. First of all, if you look at Daniel, Daniel 1, Daniel and his relationship or his disposition towards the king, Daniel made a decision. I'm not going to eat from the king's table. So get, listen, can you all give me permission uh, to not eat what you guys are eating? Because it's not according to, 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 to my religious standards, to my principles, to what we were taught and to the level of health that we want to maintain. That's not going to do it for us. We don't spiritually know where it's coming from, who it's been sacrificed or what it's, what God has been sacrificed to. These are the remnants that are left. Up. We don't want any parts of anything that is unhealthy entering into our body. And they gave him permission. You know the story. If you don't know the story, learn the story. Gave him permission to not eat from the king's table. And as a result, I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version. At the end of it all, those boys, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel, they were more healthy. The Bible says their visage, their appearance was better and more healthy than every other man or every other young man that was being taught and, and had been engaged as a part of the process of being used in the king's court. So please understand that this is not a new phenomenon. Your diet matters. What you ingest. Now, I can speak just from food perspective, but it, it also equates to what you ingest spiritually, emotionally, visually, audibly. All of that matters. What you inhale while somebody else is doing something else. Woo, contact. I'm going to leave that right there because some of y'all are going to tell on yourself in front of your kids. Just act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. You got a contact. It ain't no Holy Ghost. High. Help us, Holy Ghost. Listen, it, it is important that you know what you ingest, what you put in, the diet of it, the, 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 the content of your diet. It matters. He observed where it came from. He said, I don't want that because I'm looking at where that food is coming from. He was mindful. He was conscientious about where it was coming from. You don't know where it's coming from, and you don't even care where it's coming from. You just know it tastes and smells so good. 
I mean, you just know. It's uh, I can't I can't really hardly say the words because I grew up down south, and I I I had to smell this this I all yeah I smell this a lot, and it's because my family they loved it. You know, chitterlings. Yeah, uh, they, they didn't call it chitterlings as you see on the. On the container in the store, it's called chitlins. You know, that, that's a down, I don't know if that's a down south thing or wherever you are, but I can't understand for the life of me how you are having a good old time. I know some of y'all are blowing up the chat room right now. I love me some chit. You got to know how to, you got to put a potato in it to take the smell off. You got to put some hot sauce on it. I don't care what you put on it. When they told me where it came from, oh, that's enough for me. God bless your ministry and keep it. I don't want to eat nothing smell like that. God bless you and keep all of you all. My prayer is for deliverance. Help us, Jesus. We have discovered that the way it's prepared affects how your body responds. If you pour a whole gallon of salt in there, guess what? Your pressure is going up. You didn't hear me. Your pressure is going up. So don't wonder later, like, I don't know why my pressure is up. It's because of your hand. You don't even taste it. You just grab the shaker. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I told you this was going to check and challenge you today. You should have braced yourself. Listen, he was also, Daniel was also committed to the outcome. 1 Corinthians 10, 31, the English Standard Version says, so whether or not you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. You missed it. Whatever, whether you drink or eat whatever you do, even down to what you eat or drink, do it to the glory of God. Whoo! I just messed up some of y'all's private communion. You'll get that later. Yeah, he was also willing to pay the premium. He knew that there was going to be a cost. It could have potentially gotten him in trouble with the king. He knew that it was going to be expensive because it could have gotten them, uh, it could have actually gotten them all the way to execution because the king, if he had been offended by it or if, or if he had gone back and the messenger took it the wrong way or even if the food that they chose to eat was not healthy, he knew that it came at a cost. And this is something that I need us to understand. And it's unfortunate. It is unfortunate for so many reasons. I'm not negating and neglecting the conditions that we have to fend for or fight through. I know that some of us are up against some, some ridiculous odds because the imperative of our economic system and our social system and our, our, our neighborhoods, our communities and how they're systematically structured. I get it. I get it. I'm not discounting that. But I need you to make up in your mind in order to eat healthy, you're going to have to pay the cost. Sometimes you, it's easier to eat fast but it's not as healthy to eat fast. Sometimes you have to spend a little bit more because it's expensive to eat healthy. However, it is an investment that is worth making. And I can, I can relate to the argument that it is so expensive. I remember the first time I went to Whole Foods, I was excited. It's like, yeah, I'm going to Whole Foods, I'm going to eat it healthy. Nobody told me. I did not know. I did not know. Nobody told me anything. You know, I feel like ain't nobody told me nothing. I get to the counter. I got a basket full. Everything I thought I saw, that looks healthy. I dropped, I dropped so much stuff in there. Get to the counter, and it's just a little bit. It wasn't a lot. Just a little basket, you know. I was like, okay, cool. She says, okay, that's, that's going to be $500. What? 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 Uh, and so it was, it was, you know, it's been a long time. I ain't always been affluent and God hadn't, you know, ha always had me in this season. I've had some other seasons. I've had some, you know, where you sit there, you swipe your card and you pray seasons. I know some of y'all can relate. You know, it's like, oh, Jesus, they said, okay, thank you. It's like, oh my God, it went through. I've been there, done that, some jacked up credit seasons. I've been to all of those places. So trust and know it hadn't always been like this. But it, it had been a long time since I had any of those thoughts or those feelings or those emotions standing in the checkout line. But they said $500. I said, oh. my pride kicked in. And I just pulled out my card like, oh, yeah, I got it. Sure, you know, I, I got it. 
And finally, you know, I kind of checked myself. I said, no, it's like, you know what? Um, put that back and put that, put that back and put, put a, I don't, I don't need these things right here. And it wasn't about me being able to do it. I could do it, but it's like, what? What? So there are ways I have learned since then to still eat healthy, to pick and choose the things that you need to get from where you need to get it from, and to maintain some semblance of a budget, but count up the cost and know that it will be a premium. It will not be what you are used to paying, but you are not paying for food. You are paying for health. You are paying, and either you spend more on the front end or you have insurmountable and incredible bills on the back end for doctor's visits and ER visits and or it costs you even worse your life which then you lose your potential to live out your purpose second thing that you need to understand uh, uh, about uh, physically being prepared in this plan is you need to have discipline you need to have discipline yes you need to have diet but you also need to have discipline you can't give in to everything that your body craves. And again, I'm not preaching to you. I'm preaching to us because trust me, it never fails. There is an anointing on ice cream at midnight. Oh, you don't understand. It's anointed. I don't know what I, it's like. And I feel like I'm, I'm preaching a sermon because as soon as it hits midnight, it's like, and at midnight, there was a rumbling and an earthquake and the earthquake is actually my stomach growling because i don't know i get i get hungry at midnight so guess what i have to do go to bed i gotta not be up at midnight because if i'm up at midnight i'm probably going to raid the refrigerator so you have to put things in place to protect yourself and it has to you have to use discipline here's what the scripture says about it first corinthians 6 and 12 english standard version all things are lawful for me but not all things are helpful and all things are lawful for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Proverbs 23 and 2, and put a knife to my throat if thou be a man given to appetite. 1 Corinthians 9 and 27, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others I myself should be disqualified. Remember, some things are not demonic, they're just delicious. It's delicious, but you got to make sure that you are being disciplined. That means you got to ask for supernatural strength. Here's your strategy for being disciplined. Here's the strategy. It's going to help you. Get you an accountability partner. Get you somebody that's going to call you and say, hey, man, come on, work out. Come on, what are we doing? Get you a trainer, a workout group. Get a video. Establish a workout partnership. We're in the social media age now. Everything's digital. You should have some digital people that you are working out with online. My former trainer, she does workouts. She's been doing workout via uh, online platform. So get you some people that can be an accountability partner. Get you a workout group, a trainer, or somebody that can actually work out with you. There are videos. There are apps now that are inexpensive. Set realistic goals and objectives. Don't come in talking about, I'm going to lose 20 pounds today. No, you're not. You're going to be disappointed. And you'll be back at square one and work toward a target. Work toward a target. Let me tell you what my, one of my targets is. One of my targets is always this, TV. <laughs> All it takes is for me to see myself on TV. I, don't, I very rarely will watch myself. I just don't like to hear myself preach, sing. I, just, I very rarely will listen to myself. But when I do, I'm not even hearing myself. I'm so busy looking at what is going on. So TV is a great motivator for me, but have a target. By this time, I'm going to do this. But I'm going to go from this to this by when. Have a target. It could be a pair of clothes or, or, or jeans or a jacket that you, if I know that there's a suit that I need to get into or that I want to get into, it's my target. I got to get in that suit. Get you a target, whatever it is. It'll be different for everybody, but get you a target. And then lastly, downtime. This is a hard one. This is not an easy one. Rest. Hebrews 4, 9 through 11, for if Jesus had given them rest, then he would not afterward have spoken another day. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. You have to have a Sabbath day. You have to have a day of rest. 
One rule of thumb is that if you work with your mind, play with your hands. If you work with your hands, play with your mind. But create an opportunity for you to shut down doing what you normally do and how you normally function so that your mind and your body can rest. Rest is important. Let me tell you how important a Sabbath day of rest is. Sabbath is on the same list as murder and adultery. It's a sin not to honor a Sabbath. Not to put yourself in a place where you are honoring a Sabbath day of rest. There are some who are legalistic to the letter of the law that believe that there's a Sabbath and it's on Saturday. There's some that believe it's on Sunday. I'm not going to be that legal in this. I don't want to be that letter of the law, but I want to be in the spirit of the law because the letter killeth and the spirit gives life. But I want you to understand that you have to have a Sabbath day of rest. So here it is, family. We have work to do. You, me, we've got work to do. There was a woman who went to the doctor's office and complained about her health. And he examined her thoroughly, looked her up and down, and saw what was going on, and uh, ultimately had the conclusion. He said, there's nothing wrong with you physically. He was convinced that the problem was due to her negative attitude towards life. He basically had called her a hypochondria and said, there's nothing wrong with you, ma'am. You just depressed. You got a very nasty and bad disposition. Your, your attitude is bad. And she had become filled with bitterness and resentment because some things had happened in her life and in her past that had turned her sour towards life and towards living. And he took her into the back room and where he kept the, most of the medicine and he showed her a shelf that was filled with medicine bottles and they were all empty. And he said to her, he said, listen, see these bottles? Look at them. Look at all these bottles. Pay attention. I want you to see all these bottles. You see them? They were all empty. He said, they're all different sizes, all different shapes, different heights. You see these bottles. The most important thing I want you to notice is that they have nothing in them. They're empty. They have nothing in them. See them? They have nothing in them. He says, now, I can take one of these bottles and fill it with enough poison to kill or I can take one of these bottles and fill it with enough medicine to heal. I am the one that makes the choice. I decide what goes in these bottles. You decide what goes into your life. What goes into your mind, your spirit, your heart, your health, your body. You decide. You are an empty vessel. And daily you make decisions as to what you will fill this earthen vessel with. Here's what I do know it's filled with. God says, and we have this treasure and I hid it in earthen vessels. You are filled with the image of God. You are filled with the power of God. You are filled with life that came from God. You are filled with the potential of God. He says, greater works do I have in store for you than even the things, the miracles and all the wonderful things he did while he was here. He said, what I've got for you is greater than that. You've got potential. You've got the proxy of God. You can ask anything in his name and according to his will, it'll be done unto you. He's invested a lot in you. So what are you filling up the rest with? Each day, God gives us is a day full of empty bottles. <laughs> and we can choose to fill it with love, with life, with life-affirming thoughts and decisions, or we can fill it with destructive things that are tearing us down from the inside out. The choice is yours. Choose life. We're about to restart, family. I know it may be a month, two months, I don't care, whatever it is. It's going to be a restart. And you need to be ready to run. I'm getting ready for TV. <laughs> what are you getting ready for? I'm getting ready to use my voice. I want to be in health that I can jump and run and praise God exuberantly like David. Dance if I want to. I want to be able to enjoy the excitement of my children. And What are you getting ready for? I want to be physically fit so that I am not in a position and a posture that I'm on medication that makes all kind of other side effects manifest in my life. I'm getting ready for the long haul. I'm going to 
I want a marathon. I don't want to sprint. What are you getting ready for? I'm getting ready so that if a virus attacks me, he's going to have a heck of a fight. The enemy is going to lose. What are you getting ready for? Be prepared. Fill yourself with the power of God, the love of God, the wisdom of God. Choose life. There's a restart coming. There's a restart coming. And the best way to do that is to choose Jesus Christ. Let him be your savior. That's the first step. Because there's nothing that compares to the life that he's giving us beyond this world. He's giving us everlasting life. No more walkers, no more canes, no more heartache, no more disappointments, discouragement. It's just every day in heaven, like the old people said, will be like Sunday and the Sabbath will have no end. So what are you waiting on? God says, I'm going to give you grace and that's sufficient that you can do with all things. What are you waiting on? Choose today. If you are listening to me and you want to choose Jesus Christ as your Savior, pray this prayer. It's a powerful prayer. It's simple, but it doesn't just change your life. It changes eternity. Romans 10, 9 and 10, God says, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus was raised from the dead, you shall be saved. I see your hands in the, in the victory in the chat room. I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. I'm so proud of you. It's the best day of your life. I'm so proud of you. If nobody else tells you, I am so proud of you. Because against all odds, against the past, against the history of your own life, even against some legacy, you are setting the family back on course because you are choosing life. Not just this life, abundant life, but everlasting life with Jesus Christ. What an incredible decision you've made. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord. Repeat after me. Say, Lord, thank you for this day and for preserving my life for this moment. I admit I have made some mistakes, but I'm so glad you forgive me. And I believe you were born, you died, and by faith, I believe you were raised from the dead. I accept you into my heart. I make you Lord of my life. And with this confession, I'm excited to say, come on, say it real confident. I am saved. Come on and celebrate. I'm clapping with you. Clap all over the world right now. Celebrate. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. God, I ask that you would cover them, shield them, protect them. Let them know that they're not by themselves in this journey of becoming. And show them that you're going to continue your perfect work until the day of Jesus' return. I praise you and I honor you that you're going to give them wisdom. That you'll give them godly relationships. That you'll unite them with the right fellowship. And that God, the word will be spoken over them and into them to the degree that the enemy will be defeated. Even in every attempt to take them off course. I bind the enemy in the name of Jesus and I plead the blood of Jesus over them. Now have your way, God, and get the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, shout. In Jesus' name we make the devil mad. In Jesus' name we pray. Demons tremble at that name. He can't do nothing with it. In Jesus' name, shout it and say amen. God bless you, family. Get ready for the restart. Get up off of your couch. Come on, it's time. It's not too late. Come on. Get up. Get ready for the restart. It's a new season. It's a new day. I feel it. God's going to do a new thing in the new season. God bless you until next week. Restart. Hello, and thanks for joining us online at Victory. We hope you enjoyed today's message. Be sure to join us next week for another message of hope, healing, and empowerment. For more information about Victory, visit our website at getthevictory.org. Also, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for daily inspiration and encouragement. Your giving makes a difference, and Victory has made giving simple. Text Get the Victory, Get the Victory BC, or Get the Victory VC to 77977. Select the giving link. Enter the amount and gift type. If it's your first time giving, you can enter your payment details. Then, simply confirm your gift. And just like that, you've made an impact. You can also cash app Get the Victory by downloading the app in the Apple or Google Play Store. Thank you for your generosity. 
Have a great week, Victory Walkers. Keep walking in victory and remember to be the church.